and the party is hereby directed to commence the process of removing them from the register of the party. I went there for development. You don't apologize when you go on and you call. But if you want to go and talk about issues that affect the party, then you must give given permission by the party before you go to see the president. What you see, these people must be seen for what they are, traitors. Kupata Hi, at Tonana Nawewe, and the ball has finally rolled because it's been an eventful week at the ODM party where we saw the party make good its threat to expel five members who are accused of going against the party decision. That decision was orchestrated by the National Executive Council, which gave the green light for the removal of five legislators and the fining of three others. The grounds for the expulsion is all to do with advancing the interest of rival political parties. So we're set to deliberate on this and other matters that featured prominently in the course of the week. My panelists are joining me. Allow me to introduce them before we delve into the murky waters of party politics. Starting with the gentleman on my immediate right, Odoyo Widi, is joining us in the capacity of a political analyst. It's great to see you, sir. Karibu sana. Thank you. Yes. Equally joined by Hezbon Wheeler, mm -hmm. capacity communication strategist. I hope you had a fruitful <coughs> week. I did. Okay, it's great <laughs> to see you, you as well. Thank you for having me here. Asante sana for your time. Equally joined by Dismas Mokua, mm -hmm. political risk analyst. Hope you had a fantastic week. I can't complain. Okay, gentlemen, <laughs> it seems none of you is complaining. Mm -hmm. So let's go right mm -hmm. into it. Odoyo, a lot has happened, and all that was to do with that particular meeting at State House on February 7th this year, where those legislators went for perhaps development matters at State House. Now, the ball has finally rolled, and I'd like to start with your analysis of the move made by ODM. Does the expulsion of ODM members of parliament actually undermine democracy? What do you make of that particular move? Because there are those who argue that number one, it hinders freedom of association and expression. But on the flip side, there are those who are arguing that according to party laws, according to the constitution of Kenya, this is the best move to hinge in on what we call, perhaps, lack of a better word, you know, political shifting of chairs. <laughs> yeah, I don't you, use derogative <laughs> words right here. So what do you make of it, Owili? Leave those words for me. Don't even mention them. Okay. But this very thing ODM has done oh. is actually going against Article 91 of how parties should behave and not behave. Two, this is the ultimate example of double standards. Because I remember uh, the Busia governor visited State House with his MPs. I have seen many, many other ODM MPs mm -hmm. visit the president, and I think what we are debating about here is party politics. But what those people did was to go and see the very president of the Republic of Kenya who was sworn in in daylight. Number three, it is very difficult 
to explain what these people are talking about because, first of all, the constitution envisaged an MP to be elected and stay in parliament for five years so that the people see if he performs, they, 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 they re-elect him. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't perform, they recall him. But what they are doing is like midway, he has, they have failed exam question number five, they are being recalled that they have failed. But again, that failure is only according to the party. But in the law of natural justice, the law of the land, mm -hmm. these people have not failed. They only visited President William Ruto, who is the president of the Republic of Kenya, not William Ruto, the party leader of UDA. More so, uh, when you go to State House, which everybody seemed to want to go, I wish they could one of these days say there is a, a, a lottery for going to State House. All those supporters of UDM will vie for that so that they get an opportunity to go there. Because I don't think going there is going to play party politics. That act of 2011, of the Political Parties Act, which I hear them mention every day, mm -hmm. that you will be deemed to have resigned from the party. If you propagate the policies of another party or promote the policies of another party right. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. can they prove it anywhere? Because what I saw those people did had nothing to do with party politics. So, so I think this is just what I call weave. But what I know it is, that is what I call it, what I know it is, mm -hmm. It is Raila Odinga trying to hold Luo Nyanza in his grip so that he does with the, whatever he, li he likes doing, which you also know. Okay, so perhaps that's why you're saying, because not everyone was punished. There are five who actually bore the brunt of that particular move. So he's simply trying to maintain his grip in that region. Yes, and Plain those and people he's punishing are the ones he's certain. If they are ever removed, only ODM can win that seat. You know, Migori is very mixed up. You, you can't just play around. You can easily lose that seat to somebody else. Mm. And again, it's vendetta because look at Jalango. Jalango went to State House the same way these people went. But now his case is being held firmly like he's the only one who made those bad mistakes. In fact, his business in Kisumu was even destroyed to the ground till today. And that again goes against Article. 91. Intimidation by political parties of members is outlawed by Article 91 of the Kenyan Constitution. Interesting. Owila, as you come in, allow me to quote the Deputy President who said this, Raila Odinga doesn't see any mistake when he meets the President. The other day, Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka came to State House at night and he hasn't been expelled from Azimio coalition. So I guess the obvious question is, where exactly should we draw the line? Does <coughs> collaborating with the government of the day amount to betrayal of the party? Well, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot into this, you know, and, and uh, you can't just uh, quote uh, the law and say that uh, it is black and white. Because, one, there is Article 91 that he's talking about. Yeah. That is the Poli Political Parties Act. And if you anchor yourself on the Political Parties Act, uh, the expelled MPs and the ones who have been fined have been taken through a due process. And it is for the, for the, for the political party to take them through the necessary uh, steps according to the party constitution. And it is even clear that they, they, they can even appeal, you see. So the expulsion is predicated on what ODM believes is contravention of the ideals of ODM and what ODM believes in in relation to what the act provides. Now, the reason why we have the law and acts of parliament is so that if there is any good deed that you want to uh, ensure becomes the norm, mm. we can enforce it, you see. So if you want fidelity to the, the, the rules and regulations, a fidelity to the ideas of a political party, there is the law. You see, and the due process of the law has to take its course for you to even determine that they've been treated fair or unfairly. But the fact that they've even been told they can still appeal tells you that this is a process that is anchored within the law. But let us forget about the law and look at the intention. Because we are running away from the political context within which these ODM members of parliament went to state house. You know, today you cannot tell me that if you want development as a member of parliament, 
the surest route to get development for your constituents is to visit parliament. How many members of parliament are there in Kenya? If all of them were to troop to state house, the president, his deputy, and his entire cabinet will have nothing else to do. Okay. So let us call this for what it is. This is a ploy to implode, one, NASA, not NASA, Azimio, mm -hmm. and then number two, the constituents' party within Azimio. And the target are two major political parties, Jubilee and ODM. There's nothing else. That is the context within which these individuals went to state house. You cannot tell me that uh, my friend, Mark Nyamit, and he's talking about Migori, that it can go either way. My friend, uh, who is an MP, neighboring Suna East and, and, and Uriri constituency, a neighboring uh, constituency, there's no problem if you host the president in your region in the name of development. There's no problem if you go to state house in the name of development. But let me ask you, how many times has the president gone to Migori? Where I come from, and the immediate constituencies, the biggest problem is the sugar problem. Mm. The biggest problem has been uh, tobacco growing, which is dead completely. So if conversations were around these things that would benefit the people of Migori, I would understand. But this is an implosion that is planned to kill Odium, kill Jubilee, and then consolidate all these other small parties within one state-owned political party, so to speak, called ODA. That is why you see what is happening in ODM, what is happening in Jubilee, and then uh, the Secretary General for ODA is also calling for, uh, you know, uh, okay. merging of all the constituents' political parties mm -hmm. within Kenya Kwanzaa to, fro to form one big political party. But let me say this. You see, in as much as we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are talking about the rule of the law, the rights of these members of parliament, ODM has given them a clear pathway on what their right you know, entails, and no one is taking that right away. What we are running away from is a situation where we have a system that has created Uda Jubilee and Uda ODM. You know, and in Jubilee, they are very callous to the extent that they have formed a, a, a splinter Jubilee with members who attend Kenya Kwanzaa parliamentary group meetings. And you ask yourself, what exactly is going on? You know, if as an individual you want to join UDA, it is very simple. Take the bullet, bite it. Raila Odinga did it, went, to, 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 uh, went back to the people of Langata. They elected him. He left Ford Kenya, mm. went back to parliament on, 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 on uh, NDP. It made Raila who he is. It is the reason why people want to support him okay. and people want to hate him. If, 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 if these guys are what they are sold, why, then they, why don't they contest on UDA? to make work easy for everyone. Okay, and well, we'll get to that. So, <laughs> Moko, as you come in, is development domiciled at State House? That's one of the points Hezbon has articulated. Because uh, looking at the list of best performing members of parliament, did they have a proper rapport with the president as to such? Thus, you know, your development agenda is well catered for. Because that's one of the reasons those rebel MPs actually cited as you know, that's why we went to state as one development for our regions, and this is the president at the end of the day. Well, what say you about this? You know, in, uh, depending on who you speak with, whether it's Azimio or Kenya Kwanza, you'll get a, a friendly or a hostile answer. <laughs> but uh, running away from theory, coming to practice mm -hmm. and facing the facts, mm -hmm. the president of the Republic of Kenya has got the arm and has got the knife. The resources are <coughs> located by the National Assembly come through proposals as presented by the Minister for National Treasury, which is agreed upon in the cabinet. The cabinet is chaired by President William Samuel Ruto. Those proposals go to the National Assembly, they are debated, MPs allocate resources, and it becomes law. It therefore means that the President's uh, priorities and interests get presented to the National Assembly, they discuss and they become law. Now, if a legislator has good capacity and competence to lobby, and the president thinks it's a good idea, that idea will find itself into the cabinet, it will find itself in law, and you will have projects coming in that constituency. Mm. It does not mean that as an elected member of the National Assembly, you must go to State House for you to, to get uh, resources allocated to your constituency, no. Okay. But there's an added benefit that uh, the president can take your call. There are many people in Kenya who would like the president to take their call or even just respond to a text message. But if you've got a burning issue and the president can take your call, 
it's a good deal. Now, Owila here says, it talks about there's no black or there's no white. But we, it must be in black and white for several reasons. Mr. Raila Odinga, the, the Azimio leader, was at a KICC not long ago in a function hosted by President Ruto. Kalonzo Msioka, a few days ago, was at State House. State House, the current occupant of State House, is President Ruto. Mm -hmm. When uh, President Ruto was in uh, Western Kenya, all those governors came to his meetings. When he was in, uh, Eldoret was in Gishu, they went there for meetings. So all of them had consultations. Okay. Now, if ODM <coughs> wants to punish anybody for taking a photo with President Ruto, or for having a cup of tea with President Ruto, how come they've not started with Gladys Wanga, with the Busia governor, with the Kisi governor, with the Kakame, all these governors who've had an occasion to present their laundry list to the president. <laughs> How come they have not been fired? That is number one. <laughs> then number two, mm. we must ask ourselves whether or not ODM actually is a democratic party. Because in ODM, you only make mistakes and you are only penalized if you interfere or you compromise or you assault Mr. Rail Odinga. Because this thing is not in black and white. For instance, oh. Esther, Esther Pasaris, what kind of, uh, she's accused of voting against the party position. Yeah, on the finance bill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A penalty is 250,000. There's another one, Mark Nyamita has been told 1 million. And the others who have been given matching orders. Now, is there a template, is there a matrix that uh, if you throw a stone, this is the punishment? If you still make this the punishment, mm. or the punishment is at the pleasure, <laughs> or is at the pleasure of the party leader? Okay. You, you know, the challenge we have here is that. Uh, there is no difference between ODM and Mr. Ray Lodinga. So the discipline or punishment, it's at his pleasure. And, and when you ask the question, I started thinking, and then what comes to my mind is uh, Dr. Martin Luther J the, King, the, the, the King, yeah, the gentleman from uh, the US. He had a sermon two months before he was assassinated, and he spoke about the drum major instinct. You know, a drum major is the person who leads a band. Mm. You are in charge of the parade. And uh, you want to feel that you are all, always at the top of the game. Now, Mr. Raila Odinga, he must use his uh, power within the political party, first of all, to promote internal democracy. And if you're going to punish people, make it in black and white. You, you, you cannot, uh, I mean, the media reported that uh, he actually altered uh, the report. So it means that uh, there is no internal democracy within the political party. Now, I, I think the Azimio disciplinary team chaired by Mr. John Mbadi should meet again and expel Mr. Raila Odinga from the political party, first of all, for engaging in a handshake with the President uh, Kenyatta mm -hmm. without party authorization, and number two, <laughs> for going to KCC <laughs> without party authorization. Because there is uh, this thing, and uh, this, you know, this gentleman is highly learned, he's a professor <laughs> of communication. Okay, as what, works for, what is good for the goose? It's good, good for, for the, the gander. gander. Can it work at ODM? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are interesting sentiments. Although, as you come in, to talk to us about their chances of political survival, he's raised the question why not go back to the by election? We well know of the lengthy, low process. It might run up till 2027. No, no, there are some you facts know? that I need to let you know. Okay. Like when he's saying that uh, Raila Odinga altered the judgment for Pasaris. What Raila Odinga was trying to do is classic politics. I'm here as an analyst. He wanted to tell the world that it is not him calling the shots. It is somebody else who took those people through due process and wrote those judgments, and him, he was just trying to save them, which is wrong. Then uh, you, you, you said that... Uh, uh, Raila Odinga went back to some election in 1990, Moi. It's 94, isn't it? Yes, sir. Kibero. Let me tell you, that yeah. thing was cooked by President Moi. He wanted Ford Kenya to be split into two. So he financed Raila Odinga for Langata to go back, and he financed uh, Wamalwa. He was told in his face in Northeastern, and I was seated down. My own chairman of Wasojiro North told him, when we finance you to split Ford Kenya to go back for Langata and we assured you you are going to win Langata. Today you are telling Kenyans that you are bold to go back for the election. There was nothing like that. <laughs> and the other thing that I need to tell you, this time that somebody has to excuse themselves that I went to State House for development, even without development, a Kenyan is free to go to State House, the house of the President of the Republic of Kenya. 
So this idea of to, to go there only for development is out. Mm -hmm. You commit no offense, even if there is no development you are going to look for there. Then Raila himself went to Mombasa at 3 a.m. to meet Obasanjo and President William Ruto. He needs to sit before the body committee to tell us why. So some of these things, <laughs> we, we need to tell the world the truth. But again, you are asking me if these things stand a chance. Mm. They do not chance, stand an iota of a chance. Even if you wanted to be cheeky, see, we'll go back to the political parties tribunal, yeah. then the High Court, mm, then the Court of Appeal, uh -huh. then the, 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 the Supreme Court. How long does that one take? These are things, you know, there was a headline once in this country that really trended. A man who never learns, it is Rai Lodinga. He should have not put himself into this embarrassment of again attempting the fourth time to expel certain people from the political party ODM. If this thing is taken to a constitutional court, he will not get anywhere because the constitution envisaged that an elected leader would take five years serving his people, making mistakes and doing good things, and then they judge him at that. It is like taking me when you've given me a three-hour exam. After one hour, you tell me, I've seen you have got question two and three wrong, so you have failed. Let me finish the time. Even uh, if you propagate another party's ideals, ideas. There was well, none. But, but that there was none. Hmm. The only thing they said, the, even Raila Odinga has not said what they did that amounts to propagating uh, the ideals of another. There is nothing they have said. Okay. And this is something they have been prosecuting on, on social media. They have been prosecuting in rallies, in churches, and so on. I have never heard them submit that Nyamita did this, which is tantamount to propagating the ideals of another political party. All right. There's nothing. So, Hezbon, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. The freedom <laughs> within ODM party has been brought into question. So, how do you look at it? Well, uh, you know, let us not mix issues here. You know, even in an organization, yeah. there is the leadership of the organization. So it is the leadership that bears the vision of the organization and chants the way forward, you know, the basic principles that anchor that vision and the mission of the organization. So you cannot say that when the leadership of an, of an organization is taking an initiative, on the direction of an organization, in this case of a political party, then you need to subject them to a disciplinary, you know, yeah. process. Yeah. Because when a leader is taking a direction on behalf of the organization, it is clear to all and sundry what the direction is, you know, and there are organs within a political party. So to say that, that, that uh, you know, if Raila went and met Obasanjo, uh, then, uh, you know, the other guys, you know, had a good reason to go and meet the president is to miss the point. The context within which we have, uh, you know, uh, the bilateral talks, which I hope will, 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 will morph into something bigger, more so a national convention, yeah. is totally different. Yeah. And that is something that even in the papers, you know, you've read, you know, that since they started, our economy has sort of improved and the business environment has become more friendly and investors are coming back. So that's a totally different context, you know. And we cannot, we cannot start pontificating around uh, indiscipline within a political party and blame it, you know, on things that are neither here nor there. You know, you cannot do your own thing if you're not the leader of an institution and claim that even the leader of that institution is doing the same thing. Then number two, you know, it is not lost on, on Kenyans you know, uh, that uh, we had a contested election. And it is not lost on Kenyans that we live in a very interesting political dispensation where there is certainly, you know, a drive to, you know, uh, emasculate almost all institutions, you know, uh, and, and we've seen this, you know. So this direction that, that uh, you know, we are taking, you know, to implode different political parties, yeah. you know, is a direction that is fairly strategic and it has, you know, been accompanied by, you know, talking heads, people who would propagate a certain narrative and they will even want to revise history, you know, play around with, with history on, on how Raila, uh, you know, split for Kenya. He did not split for Kenya. Let, let his, history is written and it is cast in stone, whether you Google or you read the history books. Ford Kenya did not split, you know, 
when uh, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga passed on, there was, there was leadership in Fort Kenya, you know, and there was a struggle in this leadership, you know. There are people who chose to remain with Ford Kenya, and we know that they chose. I mean, footages of what happened at Thika are there. Yeah. No one wanted to split. Some, there was a fight, and Raila decided, I will leave it for Omalwa Kijana. Okay. It did not stop Ford Kenya from being a very strong political party that took us to the NAC you know, regime in 2020, uh, out of the 2023 general election. But there is clarity that there was a new political party that is not Ford Kenya, you know. And, you know, the law cannot be bent over you know, at, at, at individuals wins. It is very clear. If a political party can prove that you advance the interest of another political party, you can be expelled. And once you expel, it doesn't matter whether the people gave you the mandate. Without a political party, that v uh, seat will be declared vacant. That is one. Okay. And then, uh, my friend uh, Odoyo here is also saying that an MP is given five years. No, that is not right. It is not even in the Constitution. The Constitution envisages a situation where if an MP does not serve the interest of the people who gave the MP that power, they can recall him. That is in the Constitution. So where he's coming with five years, you know, I don't know. And I can tell you, uh, I mean, this thing is not straightforward. I mean, these members of parliament who have been expelled, uh, the MCs who have been expelled, they still have a right to a, 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 a legal process. They can litigate this thing up to 20 27. It right. is possible. Okay. But if they do that, I can tell you it is the common Manainji who will suffer. They will also suffer. Because then, you know, the, the first thing that will happen is they'll, they'll, they'll be de-whipped. That is one. And then number two, they will in a legal process to perpetuity. At what point are they going to serve uh, their constituents? At what point are they going to legislate? And let us not run away from, 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 from the structure of our constitution and the way it is modeled. Okay. A governor you know, it is envisioned in the constitution that the national government must work with the county government. And where President Ruto has gone as the president and interacted with governors, they've interacted as people who are elected to serve two levels of government. At no point did Simba Rati, did Gladys Wanga, did uh, Fernandez, Fernandez yeah. at no point did they behave in a manner likely to suggest that they are pushing the agenda of Kenya Kwanzaa, okay. Uda, or even the agenda of the president. All right. They are pushing a nationalistic <laughs> agenda that is enshrined in the constitution, and it is very clear. So, Dismas, as you come in, he's raised the issue about, you know, Jubilee and its factions, which is quite concerning, according to Hezbon. And we're having this conversation in the backdrop of the National Dialogue Committee. One of its main agendas is to perhaps introduce party <coughs> hygiene, fidelity to the party. How exactly should we go about this? Because as you mentioned, if you ask Azimio, if you ask Kenya Kwanzaa, they'll give you different answers. From a neutral point of view, how do we institute party fidelity into our political parties? Yeah. The, 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 the first thing to respond to what uh, Oila has indicated, the president of the Republic of Kenya, the constitution demands that he works with uh, county governors irrespective of a political party affiliation. Yeah. The same constitution demands that the president works with members of the National Assembly and Senate irrespective of party affiliation. So if the president has got a piece of legislation that he wants to push at the National Assembly or at the Senate, he, he has been given the mandate to engage in conversations without asking you at the entry of State House to produce your political party ID, whether you are Azmi or whether you are Kenya Kwanzaa. Mm. If you're pushing a national agenda, Go ahead. I mean, we've seen President Biden engaging in that bipartisan conversation in the U.S., and it's an amazing success. Then number two, ODM as a political party has got amazing talent. But unfortunately, that talent lies uh, latent. It's not kinetic because of the fear of Ray Lodinga. Anybody who wants to sprout, you're going to face discipline, and you're going to be expelled. And uh, Rayla is going to burn uh, bridges, actually blow them up. But at the moment he blows up the bridges, you, opportunities, opportunities just sprout like the, a fountain. The president of the Republic of Kenya once was in ODM. The prime cabinet secretary was once in ODM. The two speakers were once in ODM. The list is as long as your arm. So the moment, uh, the moment Rayla discovers that you have got these talents, he wants to minimize it. 
But look at Salem Davadi. Look at our President Ruto. Look at Wetangula. In fact, Wetangula said that there are going to be many casualties. And you can see who are the casualties. Yeah. Now, let's go back to political party discipline. Okay. For Kenya to make progress, we must ensure that our political parties are driven by ideologies. That it is discipline. How do you get the discipline? We can go to the UK and borrow their model. There are, if you're talking about labor or conservatives, there's nobody who owns labor. There's nobody who owns conservatives. <coughs> In the US, there's nobody who owns the Democrats. Okay. There's nobody who owns the conservatives. It's all members who agree on their positions. They produce all manner of papers. Others are called white papers. Others are called blue papers. Others are called yellow papers. Where the party agrees on a position, and people say, this is what we are going to follow. When we go to the National Assembly, when we go to the Senate, this is what we are supposed to do. But what obtains in our political parties in Kenya? We don't have those uh, similar situations, similar infrastructure. So when you're in ODM, you don't know which action is going to annoy Mr. Raila Odinga or which one is going to make him happy. So everybody, people are just working on uh, broken eggshells. So for people to respect you as a party leader, first of all, ensure that there is uh, the party primaries, first of all, they must be free, fair, and credible. First of all, party primaries. The ODM constitution, actually all, all, all party constitutions in Kenya, but especially ODM, the party leader has got a, a blank check. He's got the Yaman knife. Whoever he wants to become uh, the party candidate will. So first of all, right. let's ensure that political parties mm -hmm. have got party discipline. Mm -hmm. Then you can enforce what you call uh, political party hygiene. Okay. And the reason why it's critically important for Mora, it's because it's Mora, the taxpayer, who funds these political parties. All of them get money from Mura. So Mura has got very valid expectations that they must be disciplined within their political party. But more important, their parties in Kenya do not become a one-man show. The reason why political parties uh, in Kenya are a one-man show is most of the political party leaders have got a phobia for talent. When they see somebody sprouting up from uh, that corner, they, they become nervous. I mean, as a political party leader, why would you be nervous? that President Ruto is having a cup of tea with uh, some of uh, your members. Okay. Okay. I mean, just a cup of tea. And I'm assuming it's just actually a cup of tea. Yes. But for us to make progress, mm -hmm. political parties must remain loyal to our national and public interest. They must not remain loyal to individuals. Yeah. Because believe you me, majority of ODA members of uh, parliament, part of the reason why they get re-elected is their loyalty to Relo Dinga. You remember the late Otieno Kajuang? In the cases that are, we look at you, and if we suspect that you are not loyal, we will not accommodate you. Now, are you supposed to be loyal to Raila Odinga? Okay. Are you supposed to be loyal to the political party, or are you supposed to be loyal to Kenya's national and public interest? That has always been the elephant in the room. Well, it's it has been briefly. Yeah, we, let me let yeah. me just uh, two things. One, I don't think we need to be loyal to you know, national interests, uh, because they are very abstract. So what is that national interest? Allah. If you ask, what is it? Now that is a scholar. Number two, <laughs> num yeah. Number two, <laughs> let me just say, if individuals in these political parties were loyal to the people who elected them, they wouldn't, want, they wouldn't have to worry about anything. I mean, my woman rep in Migori County was elected, not on, a, on an ODM ticket, but she won. Why? Because she served the people of Migori even when she was not an elected leader. Mm -hmm. So they went against ODM. Okay. So this, this, this issue of you have to be, be loyal to national interests that are not uh, concrete anywhere, uh, I think I would recommend that we talk about be loyal to your, your constituents. Then number two, let us not, not, not talk about ideology as a received term. I think political parties in Kenya are built on ideology. It's only that we want to define ideologies the way they are defined in the West. You know, we want to talk of the conservative party. There's nothing like that. Conserve what? We are just Kenyans. Uda, Uda, and Kenya Kwanza that won the election, won this election, if they did, on an ideology. And the ideology was very simple. We will get people who are poor to some respectable way of life. That is the ideology that took them to power. Okay. But I will tell you the truth. They rode on this populist ideology. <coughs> but the people who gave them those votes are still struggling. That is why they want to consolidate power and use parliament. This idea of saying, oh, a member of parliament can go to state house. No, the relationship between members of parliament and state house and the national government is very simple. Oversight, very simple and legislate. Oh, and they do not legislate at the behest of the president. Mm -hmm. uh, this must be saying here that if, if, if the president comes with bills, no. 
if those bills are introduced in parliament and they serve the interest of Kenyans collectively, and at an individual level, they serve the interest of Kenyans who elected a member of parliament, they will pass that bill, whether okay. they take tea with the president okay. or not. Well noted, Odoyo, before we shift focus to UDA matters. <laughs> briefly. You, you, know, you, know, you know, I had Dawila say that, uh, you know, these elections were contested. All elections are a contest. But if you are talking about contesting the results, my brother, <laughs> any election involving Raila Odinga is contested. In 1997, he was number three. He was the first to announce that Ali, 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 Ali Nyanganyo. He was the first. And as Kibaki was now preparing, now that even number three feels a menyanganywa to kutane kwa mukutano a press conference, he was there with Moi. Asha Ruka. He was the first also to go back to the Moi side. About, about defending Raila Odinga that him, he can do what others can't do. Then we have to have very clear powers and privilege of the party leader in that party. So that we know, as members of the party, we know in advance that what we are expected not to do, he may can do and get away with them. But again, when you take all these people to the gelatin and you leave Wanjala, who also went to State House, and these other ODM people who went to State House, then I think that is double standards. And it, it goes back to my statement that all Raila Odinga need is the six million lures, which are equivalent to Denmark. That is a country for him to deal with, pay taxes if they want. And then, representation is the role of an MP. Where does the MP represent his people? In the seat of government. Yeah. He is the link between the people and the government of the day. These MPs, they will tell you when you go back to the village, mm. I lobbied for this, I lobbied for this. And they do that in committees. So, did they go and lobby Sudan to bring a money? But they lobby government ministers. Eh? Government ministers, government officials, <laughs> agencies like ours. They are ever calling us. In fact, if you don't listen to them, they summon you for some disciplinary thing in those committees. Okay, okay. So let us not pretend that we can have an MP who does not visit a government house. Explain to me whether it is state house the location or state house the name or state house the residence, which is a problem that ODM can't face. So let us. Let me explain. Let and I've explained. Let me explain for the last <laughs> yeah, time. Briefly, briefly. Yes. Yeah. What, what my brother <laughs> is saying here is true. That MP is up to lobby. Yes. Yeah? Yes. But he's talked about committees. They are not in state house. Yeah. So committees are in parliament. Mm. Uh, members of parliament are representatives of the people at the national assembly. You know, uh, senators are representative or repre representatives of the people at the senate. You know. Now. The critical thing we may want to ask yourself, uh, ourselves is, if we leave the MPs who went to state house <coughs> out of this, the critical thing we may want to ask ourselves is, what is the political context within which all these things are happening mm. in ODM and Jubilee? You know, we cannot run away from that. All these things that we are saying are true, but the context within which these things are happening is political. It is a well-calculated move, one, to dismantle Azimio, and to dismantle Azimio through the two big political parties within Azimio. I mean, they already took the others, you know. And the conversation around making political parties strong is a very germane conversation. All right. The reason why ODM is the one we are talking about here uh, today is because ODM is the strongest. The ones that were weak, they took immediately. William Ruth was declared the president. Immediately. Uh, my, my, my friend uh, here, Calvin, uh, I mean, just before the election, ask him, which tune was he singing? Which tune was he singing? This thing he's saying about uh, Raila Odinga, didn't he know them between 2013 and 2017? And after the 2017 okay, election, okay. didn't he know them? Okay. You know, individuals can take positions, and everyone has a right to All support right. whoever they want. All right. But I will tell you, the Raila I was supporting has not changed. The winning of uh, President Ruto has not changed Raila. Neither has it changed uh, President William Ruto. But it has changed a number of individuals who now, at best, they've become griots. They are singing praises, walking around, singing praises of the president. And I can tell you, you don't have to sing Uda's praises. You don't have to sing the president's praises. All you have to do is take a position and ensure that, yes, we have a president, there was a determination even at, at the Supreme Court level. What is the right thing 
for the president to do for this country. Okay. They rode on the hustler mantra, and that is what I call an ideology. If they deliver for hustlers, and they stop calling uh, President Uru Kenyatta, his name in everything they do. They stop invoking Raila's name in everything they do. If these guys are expelled and they're given the due process, why is Raila coming in? Why can't they defend themselves and go there with evidence that they did not advance the agenda of other political parties? Well, Why does it have to be politics? Because if it okay. is politics, we situate it within what it is. <laughs> All right. The imploding of Azimio and the targeting of ODM and Jubilee. Interesting. Let's shift focus to the ruling party now. And yeah, yeah, at least yeah, we're as, I sample your, <laughs> <laughs> as I sample your thoughts on that, because President William Ruto has just renewed his quest to have all Kenya Kwanzaa affiliate parties fold and join the United Democratic Alliance, UDA. And he was speaking in Nyeri over the weekend. He said the move would create a national party that would carry the interest of all Kenyans, irrespective of tribe, hence uniting the country. He equally spoke about the party elections that are set to be held in December this year in a move that is set to excite the ruling party and cause ripples still within the party. Let's listen in to some of the sentiments that have been shared on this that we can sample what our analysts have to say. Party leader ni clan moja. Secretary General clan moja. Uh, woman leader clan mode sasa biashara gari hiyo mnadanganyana ati mnaweza kuwa president mnadanganya ati mnaweza kuwa president mnatoka tu hapo mnatoka tu kwa kina party leader ni pale kwa kina woman leader ni pale kwa kina secretary general ni pale ati mnataka kukuwa mnataka kuwa rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya hii watu wa viiga muamke bana sasa chama ikiwa chama ya viiga peke yake na viiga ndio the smallest county Nini the smallest? Tena mnakuwa na chama yenu smallest. Sasa hiyo ni sarakasi tu mnadanganyana. Kwa hiyo kwa hiyo sarakasi yenu yote the end results one family or two families zina benefit an entire community mnazama. Why? Sisi tungie kwa UDA. Democracy. Mimi nataka niwaeleze wanachama wote wa UDA tunaenda kufanya uchaguzi December. Sina namna hiyo kwa sababu wenye chama lazima waamue ni nani wataongoza chama yao weekend let's start with you mukua cuz should that party election be successful it will be the first to conduct internal elections since the advent of the is it the implementation of the Political Parties Act in 2011? We saw ODM try. I think it was in 2014. The men in black came and scattered the process. We saw Jubilee, I think, later on in 2016. But according to reports, they only managed at county level. But there was still a lot of infighting. So what, do you, what assurance do we have that this UDA internal election will be truly free and fair, as you mentioned? So... Because, I mean, if you review this whole processes around party elections, it's easier said than done. When rubber meets the road, the technicalities that come up, well, what say you about this agenda by the UDA party? Uh, President Ruto's call for the party 12 elections, the party elections in December, is a, a statement of uh, confidence. And it's only a confident party leader who would actually call for this election. Because he knows that the people are going to secure positions he said right from uh, the polling stations, are uh, people who are popular within the political party and they're not necessarily is uh, psychophants. The reason why most political parties fear calling election is they fear that you may get uh, a team of people who are not necessarily your uh, psychophants or who are not uh, court poets. That is the reason why we had uh, men in black. And uh, when you look at uh, UDA, during the last uh, elections, it was probably the, among the few political parties that had a free, fair, and a credible party primaries. So a party which can actually do free, fair party primaries then means they've got capacity to do their party elections okay. and get national officials. And that would be very solid so that when uh, any official within uh, UDA speaks, then we know he's got the mandate of the people, is not serving in an interim position. And I suspect that uh, NC will do the same, <coughs> Ford Kenya will do the same, ODM will do the same. In fact, all parties in Kenya 
which are funded by the political parties fund, which are funded by Mura, all of them should go and uh, engage in this uh, election so that we know all the political party leaders in Kenya have gone through the popular mandates. Okay. They've been tested by Mura and they've been given office. And then number two, we must now start zooming in on how they use that political parties fund. Whether they use those resources for, for makeup, for pedicure, mm -hmm. or they actually advance the political ideology. And uh, Oilea indicated that, uh, that you talk about the conservative, conserving what? I mean, if you meet any conservative in the US, you ask them what is your position about abortion, they'll give you the same answer. But if you ask uh, ODM or any other political party, what is their position about uh, global warming, others don't even know global warming. So. It's important now to have those free, fair, and credible party okay. primaries, okay. and then ensure that every political party in Kenya has got an ideology. We need to know what does ODM stand for, say, on issues of coffee? What does uh, UDA stand for on issues of uh, global warming? Mm -hmm. So that people do not join political parties simply because they like Raila Odinga or President Ruto or Salem Davadi, but because they are aligned to some vision. For instance, there's a gentleman called, uh, I think it's called Dr. Green, He's got a political party, so something green. Okay. One hopes that uh, it's actually it's about uh, global warming, mm. that you can join that political party because of uh, that reason. Okay. But in Kenya now, political parties, most of the time, they are no more than special purpose vehicles. You, when you're, uh, you come from uh, Kisi, you've got a bit of uh, political capital. Like, you know, the late Simon Nyacha, you beat everybody into a row, they join your political party, Unambia Watu, Wengi, and then you become the kingpin. <laughs> but what does the political party stand for? Nothing. Upon his uh, exit from the political party, the party collapses. Okay. The okay. same situation obtains with uh, Kanu. So okay. we need to have uh, those things. Okay. And then on the issue you addressed about uh, those other parties uh, collapsing, mm. ANC or Ford Kenya, uh, according to the Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition, that is a subject reserved for the political party leaders. They are the ones who will meet and determine the way forward. What, what do you make of the collapsing of parties? Listening to the Secretary General, the constituent 14 parties, so far seven, have collapsed into UDA. And we've seen this time and time again. Jubilee, same script when it was TNA and URP, and even previously we've seen this happen. How important is this going into an election year 2027 for the ruling party to, you know, focus on its issues at hand? Well, I think from a polit uh, political point of view, that's like the best strategy that they can have, you know, consolidate every other, you know, significant political figure into one political party. So politically speaking, uh, you, you wouldn't fault UDA as the strongest party within uh, UDA to call for folding of all the other political parties into one strong political party. Mm -hmm. And I think the agenda is very clear so that moving into 2027, they are much more uh, stronger than they were in, 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 in the last election. But we live in a multi-party democracy. So, I mean, there's, there's the reality of what we need. It is not like we need fewer political parties. We actually need stronger political parties. Political parties that can stand on their own <coughs> and they have an agenda of what they are pushing. I like what Dismas has introduced. Ideology in terms of what is their position on tangible things like coffee farming, uh, you know, uh, agriculture in, 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 in the South Nyanza region where I come from, mm -hmm. where the factories have just gone quiet and many families are still struggling to get back to their economic positions because of the, the collapse of the sugar industry. Yeah. Now, if, if you have stronger political parties that can advance solid issues and attract individuals to join these political parties, then you don't need fewer political parties. You need them to be even as many as possible. Why? Because in a democracy like ours, the issues that affect Kenyans, you know, are not many. And they are not, um, uh, they're actually very clear. All Kenyans know the things that you're struggling with, yeah? Healthcare, we want affordable health care. We want, uh, you know, to move from, from you know, uh, the poverty, below the poverty line, get enough people okay. into a respectable, dignified way of life. We know that. So if you have more political parties that are stronger, what will happen is very simple. Because they are tending to almost the same things that affect Kenyans, they will tend to differentiate their strategies from each other. Okay. And that can only be a win for Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have parties that will, out, will try to outdo each other in addressing the issues of Kenyans. So that, for me, would call for many political parties. But to have a strong political party for purposes of having select group of individuals who are already in power, plotting for 2027, mm -hmm. does not serve the interest of Kenya, okay. but credit to them for being politically served. Mm.
so there's an ideal scenario and the realistic scenario. <laughs> Coming to the realistic <laughs> scene, <laughs> ANC and Ford Kenya won't go without a fight, at least according to some of the reports we've received. What, what do you make of this particular move as we finalize it? Actually, here? that call to have one giant party called UDA is just that, a call. Mm -hmm. Nobody is forcing anyone to dismantle his party, but they will just see the need. You see, for example, now, uh, when you look at the political parties funding, only UDA got it, Jubilee, Wiper, and ODM. If ANC and uh, Ford Kenya were collapsed into UDA, we will have a giant political party that will take almost three quarters of the political party's funding. It would be make it much easier to manage that political party. Currently, if you go to the UDA headquarters, the Secretary General has a salary, a good one, everybody working there, a giant house with multiple floors, everybody has his duty going on everywhere. Today, if you go to Homer Bay Town, mm -hmm. the UD office there is bigger than the ODM there. In fact, the ODM doesn't exist in Homer <laughs> Bay. He had, to, he had to introduce Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> let, let him finish his point. I'll so, protect you. So, <laughs> so that is because UDA is a big party, okay. well managed, well organized, well planned. But you can't have a political party where six members elected by people's votes have pinned on their Twitter accounts pinned in in Unasoma ukingia kwanza. Baba is right. Baba is always right. If you are in doubt, refer to number one. Honestly, what ideology is that? Let's get a party with ideologies, a party with a working slogan, a party with, you know, UDA tells you bottom-up economy is what we believe in. And that is what they believe in. And that is what they practice. But here we have parties which don't have, their only ideology is All you right. should not go to state house, should not go where. Let's work with UDA, which has clear ideologies. Okay, gentlemen, as we finalize mm. the final round of comments, it's been an eventful week. Perhaps feel free to borrow from the Africa Climate Summit, some of the scenes we saw there. And equally, the Lake Region Economic Block held a sugar conference looking into the plight of the millers in that particular part of the country. Came up with a couple of resolutions. Uh, perhaps you could equally highlight some of the issues you think are affecting the millers. So, dismiss briefly. Final well, comments. Well, you know, the crisis you have in the sugar sector is uh, some cartels. There are, there are, okay, we have uh, 16 operational <coughs> mills in Kenya. Right. Four in the public sector. Those ones are loss making. The balance 12 in the private sector, they're making huge profits. The owners are dancing to the banks. But now the revelations coming from the president's tour, as well as this uh, conference, is uh, in fact there are some beneficial owners or people associated with those that are making a profit are using non-competitive practices to frustrate the public sector. That is why the public sector sugar mills, the, the managers spend all their time in uh, commercial courts, jumping from one court to another because of, uh, I mean, litigation, suits keep on, petitions come up sprouting like water. You know, the fountain at the University of Nairobi, the way the water comes out, that is the way the petitions uh, come up. Okay, okay. That is number one. So they've said they're going to address that issue. And number two, address the cost of uh, production in Kenya. I think that is uh, very critical because one metric ton landed <coughs> from other countries in Kenya is about $1,000. $1,000. No, no, sorry, not $1,000, $892 from other countries when they buy and it lands at the port of Mombasa. Okay. One metric ton is, um, is $892. Okay. But the one sold locally to sugar distributors is $1,000. So it actually makes business sense for somebody to import. Okay. But why, why is that? Because some cartels here are frustrated efforts. So let's work and uh, turn around that. And then uh, number two, on the issue of the climate change, that was an amazing event. However, some uh, stakeholders have complained about this, and I decided to take the bull by tones. There are some of uh, your colleagues and uh, his students did not do justice to Africa climate. Mm -hmm. They did not give us very solid stories. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe there's room for stock taking, okay. so that in future, okay. Mura back in Mosocho yeah. can understand what climate change is all about. And that when you have 20 presidents coming to Nairobi, 
how does that affect uh, Gorogoro or Umotoriro? We did not break that down. Localize the story. Okay. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. Just three things yeah. briefly. One, uh, let me just finish with the Uda thing, that we don't want Uda to uh, open political party offices. It is a ruling political party. We just want it to deliver for Kenyans. Kenyans will join Uda in droves. Mm. You know, it will become a bigger party by delivery. Then number two is the issue of sugar. I come from Migori. I went to school inside the sugar plantation, uh, all through primary, uh, high school, up to uh, university in Maseno. I think I don't buy this Moses thesis, that if we are buying sugar at 9,000, uh, is it 8,000? $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8, $8,